Welcome to SimStation Robotics. Today we're going to palletize a moving conveyor. So we're going to load a part off of a feeder and put it on a pallet that's moving along a conveyor. First thing we'll do is we'll install a robot. We're going to use a Stoibly RS-80 400 floor mounted little scare robot. So we'll load it in and uh, then we'll create a conveyor that we're going to use a belt conveyor we'll make it uh, two meters long just so it passes in front of the robot and then we'll save that and we'll wire it up to the controller every time you load in a robot it also loads in the controller and uh, the controller contains wires inputs and outputs and so when you load in peripherals like a conveyor and the feeder and the tool as we'll see then you wire those up to the robot and we'll see that later so it's best to uh, use the conveyor in the X direction in the simulation so we're going to leave it the way it is we're going to position the robot and the controller just kind of near the near the robot near the conveyor and then we'll have to move the robot if necessary for reachability next after we uh, after we position the conveyor we're going to move it up a hit a bit we're going to define a part and in this example we'll just create a block part sort of a generic part but if you want to actually have a, a part um, that you're going to use, you can model that in CAD and then convert it into a, a part here. First, let's turn off the dynamic viewing. That way, when we change views, it won't go to wireframe. So this is nice, this create parametric peripheral panel. We can create a lot of different things. We'll create the, the block here, as you see. Then we'll also create uh, feeders. And you see we create a conveyor. We can create tables, uh, tools. Here we'll create a, a suction gripper. We're just going to use the default settings to speed up the simulation here, but uh, you can actually create a, create a tool that matches your real tool. F to present the, we're going to use a gravity feeder to give the part to the robot. So we're just going to create a gravity feeder, and every time we create one, we save it in the library. And then we can just bring up the move panel, and we'll move the gravity feed feeder right next to the robot and we'll just position it kind of roughly right now uh, and you can see we can we can work on reach uh, reach studies later the gravity feed a uh, feeder nice thing about it is that it always feeds the part in the same configuration so we can just go down and pick it up uh, we also have tools for picking up parts that are not in the standard or you know maybe different stable states of the part so we can or if they're overlapping or in a bin we can pick those out too so let's create a pallet there's a pallet a three by three pallet that the block part can fit in uh, the next thing we want to do is we want to create a feeder this is what we'll call a simple presenting feeder it's just a default feeder we have to make sure that it, it feeds pallets it feeds the pallet that we've created and it's just this little square and it's just representing uh, somehow these pallets get on the conveyor so in your factory they might come from another conveyor or some kind of other robot that puts it on the on the conveyor so you can see that this feeder this little square is going to just feed pallets and they're going to come out every so often and we can specify that another thing we're, we're going to use in this example is a sensor we're going to use a proximity sensor a continuous one that's going to update every 0.2 seconds so it's going to be like a little laser beam across the conveyor belt so when a pallet crosses that then we can see that it'll trigger the robot to start filling the pallet let's put the the sensor up on the belt right around where the robot is and then we'll move it off the belt just a little bit and uh, we're going to want to make sure that the beam when the pallet crosses the beam the beam hits it so that it can sense the the pallet crossing. Here's an example of all the things that have been wired so far. So you can print out a wiring port. So it helps. It's a little more realistic in the cell. It can tell you what uh, input and output ports you're using to wire all your cell peripherals. Let's put some pallets in the feeder. Uh, just so that we're ready to go so we don't need that other pallet we'll delete that other pallet that we created just as an example 
Um, so I think we're about ready to, uh, to program the cell. Let's teach some parts. Okay, we want to acquire a part. Okay, we don't have any parts in the cell. We really need to install some parts first. So let's install some parts on in the gravity feeder. And we'll just put, say, 100 in there for right now. Okay, so really we want to teach, we want to acquire the part at the gravity feeder, and then we want to place it onto the pallet. Let's just making sure that that proximity sensor does in fact, uh, maybe move it up just a little bit so it does hit the pallet. Okay, so let's teach, so we're going to acquire the part, we're going to use a part as a, in the cell as a teacher, the block part and uh, instance number one. We're going to call that location pick, and then we're going to release the part in the pallet, and we'll use the first pallet that's going to feed, pallet two, it's going to feed them in order, and we'll call that location place. Okay, now we're ready to write a program for our cell. First thing we want to do is we want to create, we want to uh, turn on a lot of these peripherals. We want to turn on the conveyor. We want to turn on the proximity sensor. We want to enable it. We want to enable both feeders, the gravity feeder for the part and the presenting feeder for the pallet. And, uh, and once once we get all those set up, then we we can see that if the if the conveyor would have moved now, we would want to wait for the proximity sensor to say it's done or it's you know it's ready to go it's at the pallet has crossed that and then we can start filling in the the pallet so we want to repeat this step nine times there's nine places in the pallet so we'll move to pick and then we'll move to place and uh, that should be good so let's try running the simulation and see what happens with this Okay, we can see the, uh, the pallet starts off, it's moving down the conveyor, it's waiting for the proximity sensor, which seems like it is going to uh, intersect, so I think we have that at the right level. Okay, good. Okay, so the, it's out of workspace, but we're going to continue on and see if we can fill in. Okay, so it looks like it's having trouble with the first two or three spaces, I think. The robot just can't m reach that far to fill in those first two and maybe it's having trouble with a third also. So I think what we'll do is we'll just uh, clear the log. We'll move the robot a little closer to the conveyor. Uh, we could also adjust the proximity sensor, uh, but I think we'll just in this case just move the robot a little bit closer. We could what we could also do is move a pallet down there close to the robot and get an idea. Uh, but let's just run it and see what happens here. So notice that we're only going to feed one pallet in this example, but we could also feed multiple pallets and have those be simulated also. Okay, so here it looks like it's able to reach the pallet, the, so that's good. So one minor thing here, looks like we're not exactly putting the blocks in the correct location in the pallet. Uh, our locations need to be straight line mode, Cartesian mode, so we can calculate it correctly, so we're going to change that. By default, they're created in joint space. So let's run it one more time, and uh, we should have it here. So there we, it's detected. And then it runs. There we go. So we'll just uh, save the cell, and uh, we're ready to go. We can convert that into uh, whatever language we need to. Alright, thanks for watching.